okay so till now we have completed verilog hdl and computer architecture basic concepts right uh, so we are going to do the mips processor after verilog hdl actually it is not in curriculum but we have the time uh, after verilog hdl so we are going to discuss have some project extra project uh, like a mips processor so for that purpose we discuss till now computer architecture okay so today we'll have a revision session on computer architecture so whatever the concepts we have learned just have a group discussion so that everyone can understand all the concepts just like a revision okay so is there any doubts till now whatever we have discussed on computer architecture and organization no no okay so first of all let me ask a few questions okay so first uh, we'll start with uh, bhanu so can you tell me what is the computer architecture and organization what is the difference like uh, computer architecture name itself is uh, defining it like architecture in the sense you need to design like uh, how it computer work that uh, co when compared to organization how it will work like implementation like in the computer architecture it will we know what all are the instructions we have memory and registers it will represent in organization like the how data will transfer from cpu to memory memory to data like internal processing will be done in the computer organization. so next question uh, can you tell me what is mean by soc system on chip design and what are the different type of functional blocks will be there in soc it contains several subsystems each subsystem contains several ips and ips are um, divided into uh, like uh, cpu memory or registers memories i have peripherals images video etc the main control in soc the main control is uh, fabric scale sca scalable control fabric uh, in scalable fabric data it stores and verifies the data how the data is uh, moved or uh, formed okay in system on chip design there will be cluster of subsystems in subsystem there will be cluster of ips each ip have some functionality okay so like different type of processor subsystem memory subsystem io peripheral subsystems and for communication purpose we use different type of parallel communication protocols and serial communication protocols okay okay next question what are the different type of processors will be there in a system on chip design general purpose processor multi processor digital processor and graphic processor graphic processor multi signal processor digital signal processor okay so in general purpose processor what are the structure we use what are the processor structure we use uh, different processor architectures cisco risc in cisco um, multiple instructions are executed ma'am risc processor one cycle are executed complex risc processor simple instructions are used cisc processor complex instructions are used in mips processor reduce the instructions to the risc architecture ma'am okay what is the full form of mips million instructions per second million instructions per, per second. second okay so where the processor generate multiple instructions based on instructions it will be working the entire functional blocks will be controlled with the, these instructions right okay fine so next can you explain what is meant by instruction set architecture and what are the different type of instructions we use in general purpose processor yes ma'am instruction set architecture is the interface between software and computer software and hardware in computer designs it defines how processor understands and how it executes classifications of instruction set architecture are stack accumulator register and register register mode where stack is used to write the push and pop and accumulator is used to store immediate data and register is used to store the data and it is load and store up it performs load and store operations and register register also it performs load and store operations okay so did you go through risk processor instruction where we have branch type jump type instructions yes, uh, question can you explain what are the different addressing modes in processor uh, basically addressing modes are the way we specify the operand in the instruction there are implicit uh, implicit addressing modes uh, direct addressing mode immediate addressing mode register addressing modes uh, as well as indirect addressing mode <clears throat> coming to implicit ad addressing mode the operand is specified implicitly we, we directly men uh, mention the opcode itself 
whereas in direct addressing mode we specify the data uh, we specify the data in the register or memory and we, we mention the memory address whereas in, whereas in the immediate addressing mode we specify the data directly di uh, as our hash file and in indirect addressing mode we specify the data in particular memory and we specify the memory address in uh, in some particular register on another memory and mention the memory address in the operand field whereas in register addressing mode we specify the data in the register and uh, declare the register in the operand place itself okay so like if you give if we give add r1 comma 01h comma 24h so what type of addressing mode it is uh, it contains two types of addressing mode which is register addressing mode as well as immediate addressing mode, addressing mode. Uh, the the data 01h and uh, 24h 24h are immediate addresses whereas r1 is a register addressing mode these two data, these two data are added and we store it in the r1 register can we combine both addressing modes in one register one instruction yeah we can okay fine next question is how the instruction execution cycle will be worked we have five stages in instruction and execution cycle and first one is first from uh, here, this stage takes uh, instruction from memory location or registers, and after fetching the data, it sends it to decoder, where the where the decoder decodes uh, what our operation is, and it sends to the like, execution state where our operation performs, and it's next it goes to next stage, next stage is memory stage where it takes uh, it rewrites the data, it uh, it directly jump to write back stage where it where the output is written in registers or okay in execution stage how the instruction will be decoded and executed no ma'am here we are the, we have we have separate stage. for decoding we have separate separate stage and for execution we have separate stage. after decoding it uh, it goes to execution step where the operation is executed what is mean by decode decoder like um, if we get an instruction from and memory we don't it will directly we we cannot uh, say that it's and what operation it is so here the decoder tells what to do exactly for an um, logic block or whatever right? like hail you for suppose you know, for if we get an instruction from memory it, it says that we need to do addition operation or multiplication operation so the execution will be done in execute state where uh, like logic box alu they will be present okay so next question what are the different type of hazards in pipeline uh, there are the three types of hazards in pipeline uh, they are structural hazard different instruction uh, at different stages uh, depend on the same hardware then it's called structural hazard uh, next uh, data hazard uh, both the instructions uh, depend on the same data uh, control hazard uh, successor uh, instruction is depend on the previous uh, instruction which is already in the pipeline the, okay mm. So, what is mean by bypass and stall? Uh, no idea, ma'am. Okay. So, bypass and stall, uh, we will be learning in risk processor. Okay. okay. Next question. What is the difference between pipeline and non-pipeline architecture? Yeah, non-pipelining is a technique where once in one instruction completes the all stages where before next one starts. Whereas in pipelining, pipelining can, can implement multiple tasks and can be overlapped in execution. Okay. So, why do we prefer the pipeline architecture instead of non-pipeline? Yeah, ma'am, pipelining is a technique. It can be performed parallel execution. Okay. So, it is better to perform. So, the number of in, uh, instructions will, will be, be executed right parallelly. The overlapping will be happened in the pipeline, pipeline. operation. So, that the, uh, the instruction will be executing in a fastest speed up. Okay. So, next question. What is mean by CPU time? The amount of time that a processor uses the CPU is called CPU time. Okay. Yes. How can we calculate the CPU time? Uh, like we can calculate CPU time like uh, number of instructions count into uh, clock cycles per instructions into another uh, clock cycle time. Okay. The plot of these three we can call as CPU time. Yes. Okay. So today we have completed theory questions of all computer architecture. 
from tomorrow onwards we are going to do a project on mips processor okay by using all these different uh, concepts and we need to learn hardware level how we can implement the mips processor after mips we will be doing on risk processor okay mm -hmm. so okay thank you all thank, thank you, you